kind of interesting. Anyway, there it is. There's, wow, there's my ugly mug. And there's Sumatra. Uh, this is going to be fun. Uh, what I want to show you today is really the next generation in animation tools. Uh, I got a chance to go to Montreal a few weeks ago, spend some time with the developers, and learn this package. Uh, so I'm going to try to show you the best of what I saw, the best of what those guys told me. I think the best way to start out is just talk a little bit about the interface. Um, first of all, it looks a lot like Soft Image, I think, what we've all uh, known, grown, and loved. Uh, we've got our two toolbars on the left and right here, our four viewports. Uh, we don't have model motion animate. Mom, matter, I can't even remember them anymore. We just have model, animate, and render. Not that we've taken functionality away, but we've just cleaned everything up. Cleaning things up like getting rid of the get buttons or file save on the, the main uh, command bar. We've got all these little good old standards, window-like uh, pull-down menus. Uh, this is pretty cool. We can go in here, file open, do all your database management here. Uh, we've got our project manager. This is pretty cool. Just a nice new way of looking at your different projects. I know some of this isn't too exciting, but those of you who have used our software for a while know that this is kind of important stuff. Just a lot better data, database management. Uh, command mapping, really cool. Drag and drop your uh, uh, sticky keys, hot keys, whatever you want to call them, just right here from your uh, thing onto your, you know, onto your keyboard. Pretty nice. Uh, let's get on the more exciting stuff, I guess. Uh, command panel, left, left panel, model, animate, render. Good old standard stuff. We'll go through a lot of these tools as the demo goes on. Uh, at the bottom here, we've got our play controls, our timeline here. We can scrub through animation. Um, it's our little multi-bot character, which we're going to use quite extensively today. Uh, over here at the bottom right, we've got our animation panel. Here I can set keyframes if I like. I can remove keyframes uh, using this keyframe button. I'll use that a little bit. Um, notice different viewing modes inside of our different viewports. Here I've got wireframes and uh, shaded views all in one. We can set up all these different kinds of uh, selectability uh, in our viewports. So you select objects, it'll turn shaded, things like that. Down here, this is a very important part of Sumatra. Everything you do, every keystroke, every command gets registered in this little window. If I pull this up, you can see that I've already started flexing around. Uh, and this is where you basically can make scripts, you can make macros, because it does record every single thing you do. And you can turn anything into a button, which I'll uh, demonstrate a little bit later. Here's our script editor, we'll go in there. Uh, over here to my right, main command panel. Lots of neat little things are in here. Uh, we've got the ability to do layers, so I'm going to go full screen on this guy, and I'll pull up my layers. Now, we have different ways of grouping objects in Sumatra. You can group them together, and then they can share materials, share animation, things like that. You can also put them in layers. Anything can be in layers. You can have camera mixed with geometry, mixed with IK, whatever. And this just allows you to very easily toggle things on and off. So if I want to toggle just his uh, blue shells, I call it. Or maybe I want to toggle off the metal. Just by clicking these, I can also toggle the render visibility and also their selectability just by clicking on these layers. So it's a really nice way of grouping your animation and not having to flex with, you know, selecting them and hiding them and all that, things like that. Uh, over here, we have a new kind of selection model. Right now, I'm in object mode, which means I can come over and basically select any object. Uh, we also have this here, where, which allows me to select just a certain type of object. So if I want to select just all the surface meshes, come over here, drag a rectangle around it, and now I've selected only my surface meshes. And pretty much all the different types of objects you can select like that. Again, just things to try to make your life a bit easier. A uh, thing that I really like over here is uh, our selection window. I can come over here and type in, say, right star, which is a wild card, and it's going to select all the objects on the right side of his body. I've done a good job of naming them. And then you can see it replaces that with multi and tells me i got 16 things selected. Or maybe I'm just going to go star, arm, star, and I'm just going to select my arms. So just a nice way, again, of navigating and selecting your objects. Uh, let's see, here we can open up property pages. You'll see me do that quite a bit. Uh, SRTs, no big whoop there, same kind of like uh, we've come to use got used to in good old soft. Uh, local, global, this is how you translate, translate local, translate global, translate locally in the viewport, uh, translate based on an object's parent, its reference parent. Constraint, we're going to talk a lot about constraints today, some neat new things in here. And uh, edit, nah, I don't need to talk too much about that. The layout is completely customizable, and by that I mean I can set up different views. So here I've got what I call my character setup view. I've created these little icons right there, little render region icons, which we'll talk about and all these little buttons, and I've actually got quite a few uh, little ones here. Here I've got a little texture browser. These are really simple to build. Here I just hacked my, my, uh, my command panel in half, moved it over, and added a browser, and I can actually toggle through different uh, property pages. Well, I don't have it in there yet, but anyway, we can toggle through like so, uh, and have these different little property pages. So again, really nice, completely customizable UI. So let's get into some, a uh, little bit more of the meat and potatoes. Uh, let's go ahead and go back to our character setup tab. And I'm going to go ahead and transform this guy, and we can see what we've got. We've got a little multi-bot, and just kind of goes from a little standing humanoid position to his little uh, doggy-like position. Take a look at the back of his legs. Note, uh, note we got animated, oops, let's go 
on my slider. We've got uh, an animated bone in there. I'm going to show you how we do that. We can animate all of our IK chains, animate their lengths. Uh, what else do I want to do? Oh, property pages. This is pretty cool. If I uh, go ahead and select my multi-bot and go into the selection. Oh, actually, you know what? I got a little bone button here. I can pull that up. See? Handy little buttons. Pull things up. This is my rotation slider for the bones, and I'll grab one more. This is the uh, bone length slider. Close with this one right there. These little buttons right here are very useful. This allows you to pin your property pages. If I don't want property pages popping in over top of one another, I can pin them down and they stay remain locked in place on the interface. Uh, and you can see as I move these, we've got all these little sliders. These sliders are really simple to set up. I'm going to set some of those up for you as well. Uh, and we can see if I pull this over a little bit, I've got the ability to toggle these sliders. All these are just animatable custom parameters. And pretty much anything, just like in Soft3x, that can be animated, you can tie to a slider, whether it's a color, whether it's a shader, whether it's uh, animation data, whatever. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and just get a little uh, position our camera in here. Ooh, a neat little enhancement is the A key. The A key takes the best of the O key and the P key, orbit, and of course, pan, and turns it into the A key. The A key allows you to zoom, it allows you to move and orbit. Isn't that great? I don't know. I think that's cool. Oh, laugh it up. That's good. So, I want to go and select all my surface meshes, and I'm going to show you something that I find very useful. Go ahead and grab this. Got all of our surface meshes selected. And if I go ahead and open up those properties for my geometry approximation, what does that mean? Well, I'll show you. Move this little panel over here, lock it down. If I go in here into my hardware display, and I kind of play with these sliders, watch the hardware change, the display uh, change. I'm actually reducing the geometry of the model just by sliding these little sliders. This is really cool. You have a really high res model, slide these little sliders down, get them down to, uh, we can bring them way down to zero if you want. If I draw a render region, hey, what's a render region? Rendering is no longer something that you do afterwards. Rendering is just part of working. At any time, you just draw a box and it renders. And it doesn't render in some... <laughs> you can also go into rotoscope mode with a ray trace rendered image. I mean, match lighting... Bleh. Lighting a, a, a scene right now with the rotoscope image is going to be so much easier. Bring your background plate in, put your, uh, your uh, geometry over it, and you can now adjust the light. No longer have to let the compositor do that if you don't want to. You can do it all right there, ray traced uh, compositing right there in, in the main interface. And in any module, even model or whatever, you know, it's all good. Uh, okay, see these little lines that are neat. When I go into composite mode, if I have my little uh, my object selected, you can actually see the wireframes underneath. Well, notice that he's still rendered very smooth, even though I set these sliders down to zero, because we have the ability to actually toggle between hardware and surface level of detail. So if I go ahead and adjust these down to zero, it's going to re-render the region, but notice now we'll see very sharp edges there on the multibot as it re-renders. Like, so, this is really cool. Turn all your geometry down to very low res after you've modeled it, but it's still going to render as high of a level of detail as you tell it to. I can also click this length button. What this does is make it so if the camera is 18 miles away from your object, it's not going to render, it's not going to tessellate it to you know, its maximum level. You can control just how uh, much it's going to tessellate during the render process based upon the distance of the camera. Very cool, useful tool. Uh, also, things like displacement. If you put a displacement map on there, slide the slider, and you'll see the displacement happen right on your wireframe model as well. Very cool. Uh, so let's go ahead and bring this guy back. I don't like the way he looks all silly like that. And I want to go ahead and draw another render region and show you something else I find rather neat. The ability to use presets. Uh, and you know what? Actually, I want to put this back on because I don't think he looks very good at all. Sharp and angular like so. I've uh, got to go into group mode. That's these little plus thing right there. That allows you to select a group. I've grouped all of these little materials into, or I use these little uh, plates there into a group. If I go ahead and select those, they're all going to get selected, and now I can drag and drop a preset. So if I want to make, uh, I don't know, my my multi-bot a green bot or a red bot, drag and drop it, and immediately all those uh, changes get propagated and it starts to re-render it. No, this doesn't take long at all. Uh, here's a little, our little multi-bot. He's kind of a, I don't know, kind of inspired by the iMac, I think. So we've got our lovely festive grape and orange and strawberry and nice little colors. Very good. So, 